Hi, this week on Reaper Live, we're going to do some painting, some troll fixing. What else? And we're going to troll fix and we're going to paint. Happy Valentine's I Day. I just said that. <laughs> right. I thought you were going to say we we're going to play Pokemon. We're going to do that too. Yeah. This week on Reaper Live. Hi, welcome to Reaper Live, the show where we blend painting, gaming, and geek culture all together for your viewing pleasure. What are you doing? <laughs> Stop Pokemon. it. Get off the phone. <laughs> okay. Fine, if I I'm must. Ron Hawkins, art director here oh, at I Reaper. Lost him. God almighty. Here with Ed Pugh, the resident child at Reaper Miniatures. Well, we are going to fix the trolls and we are going to paint. We'll just jump right into it. Yes. Um, we're joined today. And the answer is yes. By Justin Elliott, our technical director and producer today. He's two, killing two birds with one stone. Yes. So Michael Collins is off doing something else. So No, Michael, he, was, he, he bought a house. Bought a house today. Yeah. Very good. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, very good. So. Are you done? Are you yes, yes, okay. I'm done. I'm, muted? I muted it. Right. Yes, I'm ready to go. Okay, so uh, how's it going? Good, good. <laughs> okay, good. You ready for Valentine's Day? Yes. So uh, we've got a, we're going to preview, a, not preview, we're going to review, sort of Some resurrect a, a, an old Valentine's mini from years past today. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? And if you didn't know to look for it, now you're going to know. Okay. So. So we'll look at that. We're going to look at some other stuff today. We're going to look at trolls. Um, yes. So let's start with that. So um, it's come to our attention, mm -hmm. right, that our February Bones Black promotion troll, the rock troll, is going very, very well. It's doing as well as the owlbear. But we have had uh, a technical an glitch. issue, a glitch, yes. Yes. a glitch um, with the troll. He seems to have a gap in his left shoulder. Not seems. There's a gap. It's a, it, there's right. a little gap there. Some are worse than others. Some are okay. Um, and we are aware of it, and we, we you know, we're, we're, we're working towards, you know, resolving this. But um, you've kind of, and, and even though this is not an excuse, but if you, you know, if you have the wherewithal and you want to fix your right. gap, you've got a, a, yes. a, a, an easy way to fix it. There is an easy way. And this works not just on this event. This works on sure. miniatures in general. Anything, yeah. So what we had, and I'll just show you uh, as we go through it here. We you have, no, oh, that's fine. Actually, leave it on. It'll help me a reference where he told me to. Dead center. Okay, so here was a troll I was painting last week. We're going to check for that. So you look at the shoulder and you see the black line. Does that work? Good. Okay, now this is the gap that, that we're talking about. Now the easiest way to fix this gap. Now, first off, this is just a real easy basic fix. If you're an advanced modeler, you can use green, green putty, stuff, green yeah. stuff, gray. I mean, all, you've got also, this is really just designed for I'm at home and I want the best looking mini possible. So, gaps, gate issues, this works for it all. So, really, all you're going to use is Elmer's white glue. So, what I did, and there's a video that we'll play here at the end, and I walked through all the steps so you can see it. So, in this guy, you can see here, because it's been drying for a while, but there's this, you'll still see a little white line. Now, that's all I did was just use the, the uh, Elmer's glue to fill that. I'll sh in the video, you'll see how I did it, so it's not hard. Now, after it's dried, and you can see on this, I just painted the shoulder. Now, what the shoulder, you're going to see three layers. The brighter green, that is the paint on top of the fixed uh, joint. Mm -hmm. Then the next right above it is a little discolored green. That was just what it looked like before I painted it. That was after the glue dried. And then above that's a hole. And that was the gap that we filled. So, watch the video. It's real easy. It's, it's, and you can do this for anything using making bases. It's just a very it's a good hobby trick. trick. Yeah. It's a good and, hobby trick. And it's really, you can get to, everybody's got some in their house somewhere. Okay, so we'll, we'll watch the video real quick. Check yeah. this out. Yeah. Greetings, all. This is Ed Pugh. We're here to talk about the shoulders on the new Bones Black Trolls. Now, first off, I want to say this is not acceptable by our standard, and we have reached out to the, the manufacturer that injected and assembled. We are getting this fixed. It's not representation of what will happen. But like with all things we do, we learn and we get better. This is a real quick fix you can do at home. On this model here, as you can see, what I did is I've got this part of it filled and up here at the very top, you'll see there's a dark spot. That dark spot was the size of the gap that was there. So this filler here is not putty or A's and B epoxy green stuff. It's nothing really elaborate. It is Elmer's white glue. What we have to do in working with Elmer's white glue to get it to this point, we have one here that nothing has been done. So, you're going to need an old brush. This one's just an old whacked up. It still gets brushes, but it's a disposable brush. And we need the glue. So, we get it, and all we're going to do is put a small bead at the very bottom, right here, 
of the white glue. Then we're going to take our brush and we're going to work it in and work it up to fill whatever it is we want to fill in. Down here, up here. Now, as it dries, it will pull together. It actually contracts a little bit. It'll take its skin and it'll make a little bit of a dip in. But being white glue, it's going to dry really fast. Now, this kind of this little trick also works well even for spots, like on that casting gate. If I don't like that there, I just put a little bit on it. And as it dries, it will pull in. So any flaws, anything I want to do, it also, if you want to give him a little bit more texture, a splottiness to his skin. When it dries, it gives you something to hit. So as you can see now, it looks really nice. It's filled in with the white glue. The only thing, just let it dry. And you don't want to dry it too fast. Don't put it in your oven uh, or run it under a hair dryer or anything. Let it just dry. And if it's done, if it still has too much of a curve from the contraction, then just add another layer of the uh, glue. So this on this model here, when I did this one, you can still see there's the glue there and that was the gap I was filling. And it's contracted a little bit. And if I was going to paint him, and this is just one application, I would probably in this particular case, because it was a pretty dramatic gap, I maybe put two applications on there. But nonetheless, that's a real easy gap fill technique for miniatures of any kind, anywhere. Just do it. Have fun. We'll see you later. Cool. So that's very handy. Very yes. handy information. Very like you said, thing. you can use it for a, a lot of hobby mm -hmm. uh, things, so you're not just yeah. fixing your gap. I used it to, as I said, I used to fill bases. If you want to play with it, uh, static graphs or flock, if you'll put that in there with, mix that in with the white glue and then that, use that in your bases, you can sculpt. It dries. It doesn't contract. It's great. I've used it for years. So okay. nice little non-toxic, anybody can do it solution. But we are aware of the, the, the gap. Yes. And that is, yeah, and I'll talk about it in the video, but that is not our normal level of expectation. We've reached out to the manufacturer. We're getting this issue addressed and fixed. And it's just like the original bones. We had a lot of a learning curve that went on there. This is a whole different manufacturer. Mm -hmm. So again, everybody's learning. Expectations are being set. So. Yeah, so uh, we don't expect things like this to happen uh, often. I mean, it, yeah. this this one just kind of got out of our control. Things yeah. it's just it just happened. So, and we're we're going to try to make sure going forward that we don't have these issues. Yes, uh, we do our best every day to make pro, you know quality products, and you know occasionally you get a troll. It is so. So anyway, so what's next? So Jason Weeby did do it. He did not include that when he sculpted it. it was just a, it's a production error. So whatever. I don't know. I can blame that one on Jason. Well, okay, let's blame it on Jason. Jason. Yeah, yeah, because hell. Yeah, why not? He's well. What's he ever done for us, right? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. All right, so. Oh, you want to go into questions? No, no, no. We're not oh. going to go into questions. We're going to talk about, so we did the, we talked about our troll. Um, okay, so we have a special announcement. It's kind of a cool announcement. Yeah. Good, um, yeah. Yeah. We've been working on uh, something people have been asking for for years. Years. That we did years ago. Yes. Haven't done in quite a while. Wow. Yeah. And that is? That is. Ta-da. Ta-da, da da the new new catalog. catalog. This yeah. is now. This is specifically. Oops, sorry. This is a bones catalog. Okay. This is not a metal catalog. This is the bones catalog. Now, this is a, just. This is just a, uh, a color proof. This isn't the actual catalog. So the white border's not on there. So, and you can tell Adrian's gone through and marked the holy crap out of it to you know show us the things we need to fix. But um, this is our new bones catalog. And um, when do we expect to see that? I would say the printed uh, version. We've seen that one. April. April. Yeah. Well, we'll have them. It's at the printer. Are we? Yeah, we'll be handing them out. As uh, oh, we'll be store. We'll start at Gamma, right? Yeah, in we'll March. Start, start at Gamma in March, and then uh, they may be mailed out even before then. We'll be mailing them to directly to stores and mm -hmm. to consumers that, yeah. that place orders. Yeah. Uh, uh, they have to have order something enough to get the box. I, I think they're fit. I think they're a buck, right? Yeah. Well, mm. we always put a nominal price on it, but we never we never actually charge that. That's just in the past. That was always just to keep stores could charge it if they wanted to. We didn't charge the store. But if you put something out, it's free. I was, we were amazed how many people grabbed 12 of them, and then there weren't anything for anybody else. So these are going to be free with uh, online orders and yes, like that? Yes, yes. So if you make an online order that's big enough for it, the catalog to fit in the box, box if you order yes. one mini, you're going to get sorry. a small box and no catalog. No catalog. Right, yeah. All right, so more yeah. details coming soon on the reprinted.com. But it's a throwback, too. We did for years Casket yeah. Works, which yeah. was a... Uh, uh, Here's our old, one of the old Casket Works. Yeah. yeah. All of the metal stuff and everything, that was... Yeah. And it's sort of like that. We're... Trying so, to bring everyone back into that direction. Yeah. So it's about 76 pages. It's full color, you know. Yeah. So even though all the models are white, you know, it is a full color catalog. Um, and this is uh, what we're going to call the Book of Bones. Will be the name of the Bones catalogs. Hmm. So that's coming. Um, now I it's just going to. We were going to name it 
the Ed's Incredible great Book of book? Ed? No, yes, Ed's no, great. no, okay. no, sorry. All right, um, all right. So this has all the Bones figures in it that are currently in production. It does not have anything from Bones 4 in it. It has no Bones Black models in it. Right, this it's is all the current. current this is, yes. as of, you know, when we started this thing uh, a couple months well, that's ago. That's a neat development. We haven't had one out in a few years. This yeah. will allow everybody to sort of see everything in one sitting, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so speaking of the catalog, so uh, we have, how many models do you think we've ever produced total? Pieces in production are around 7,000. Total models is going to be, give or take a little bit in metal alone, you'd probably have about 35, about 4,000. It's a lot. We've done yeah. a lot. Yeah. And you've got 1,000 in bones. And they're all, they're all in a paper catalog, right? Yes. No. No. <laughs> No, no, they're not. We can't put them all in there. It'd be the size of the old Actually, Sears Actually, yes. In fact, never have put them all at one time in yeah. there. Yes, because anything canceled is immediately taken out of the and, that, and that's a term we use. Uh, it's an internal word we use, canceled. Um, things aren't really ever canceled. Well, but not nowadays. But in the in the, in the, they use the old back in the, the old day, days. The old days. Um, our, main, our main venue was to supply distribution, distribution to stores. And customers uh, would... We would periodically, let's say, do a vampire. The customers would see it. It would sell through, and it would f the sales on it would drop. Then here would come another vampire because you always have one in the catalog. So it was a weird. Uh, that was the product rotational life cycle, so to speak, of the catalog. Everything else. If you're still in the catalog, you're still in production. But the internet changed all that, mm -hmm. totally. And now everything's in production. If you got into the hobby today and went and looked at 2001, that's a brand new figure to you. Mm -hmm. And a long time ago, that wasn't very practical to do yeah. at, at any level. So, so. What, Dark Heaven was kind of our gauge. And we, so what it was was we, for, for distribution, for, for the warehouse, all their warehouses and your favorite local yes. gaming store, they only have so much So room. it's space, yes. Yeah, it's a space issue. So we only kept ab approximately, using Dark Heaven as our guide, about 500 models. models uh -huh, in there, yeah. In production. And that was what we put in the catalog. Even though we may have had 2,000 or 1,000 models out at the time, Mm -hmm. We called those canceled models. Right. But and for a while, though, they really were canceled. For a while, canceled. they were. You couldn't, you didn't couldn't get really them. Get. Yeah. I mean, you could mail order my guess, but they weren't. No, at, not even Not easily accessible. Was, yeah. yeah. So we use the word canceled now, but yeah, nothing's really canceled. So even though when we do our metal catalog later this year. It'll be what distribution what we use is available to buy. So now, a retail store can order anything. Consumers can order anything. Mm -hmm. But distribution has a very cycle. So you're really, it's limited to the hottest sellers. It's our best -selling the best-seller stuff. It's our best-selling stuff. As a snapshot, and so once a year we adjust that snapshot. We put mm -hmm. the new stuff in. We get rid of the stuff that's dropped off, and so we keep a focus catalog yeah. for distribution. Yeah. So once a year we'll cancel models. Yeah. Which just means they don't go into the paper catalog, yeah. which we haven't had in a long time. So it really. Yeah, it's been a lot of years. It's kind of confusing. Yeah. So, but we're gonna make it. We're trying to make everything easy. So that said, there are a lot of there are a lot of models in uh, the dark, or, or excuse me, just in the Reaper range. Uh, mm -hmm. There are all the ranges we have that. Uh, as a new customer, if you come into this, you know, everything's new. Maybe old to us, but it's right. new to you if you're brand new to Reaper. Right. So and there's a lot of, of neat stuff. stuff in there. A lot of neat stuff. For example, I know that uh, um, currently in our role-playing games, oh, yeah. you can play Turtle Guys, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and we have our Spike Shell Warriors, you know, which are good, you know, a, a good use of our Spike Shell Warriors is for, for um, popular role-playing games. But right. That would work, yeah. Yeah. To popular role playing games, so you have the the, uh, the spike show warriors. These are in bones and in metal, by the way. And these are actual metal models. Justin, can you put the part number up here, right there? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. These are the spike show warriors. So we got those. These are and again. These are all metal, but some of these are in bones. Um, you know, here's another guy. Here's the uh, uh, battle guard golem. Mm -hmm. Again, a metal model, but you can get it in bones as well. But this is another yeah. one that's sort of buried in our side. But if you yeah. need uh, some sort of a Construct type character, uh, the the uh, battle guard golem is a good a good choice. Uh huh. So there's that guy. He's really good. Um, let's see. Oh, let's let's look. This guy right here. Look familiar? Oh yes. Oh, that's the one from uh, Stranger Things. Yeah, this is Andalyn Bonnerstock. And part yeah. again, Justin's putting all the part numbers up here. Mm -hmm. This is the one that was featured in Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. But much to our surprise when we saw it, we thought it was really cool though. So, but he's available in metal. But we did sign a release. We, it's everything's cool. Yeah, everything's cool. Yeah, everything's cool. Not, not, not starting rumors. But this guy's really cool. So he's he's another metal model that, you know, if you didn't know and you were just looking through the Reaper catalog for for where's that wizard from Stranger Things, uh, you're not there it find, is. But now you know. Now you, know, now yeah. you got him on there. Oh, well, let's see. But um, now there's a lot of stuff that's only in metal. Yeah, you'll yeah. never see it in bones. You're right. You know? Like Andalyn Bonnerstock is only a metal model. He's not. A, mm -hmm. He's not a. Uh, 
oops, she's not wanting to stand up here. Let's bring her back a little bit. This is one of our dragon, uh, half dragon, uh, what mm -hmm. do we call them? They're half dragon, dragon men. We just call them dragon men. Right. Very simple. There are some role playing games. I don't know, maybe you've heard of them before, but they use uh, dragon men as player characters. This is just one of several uh, dragon men characters we have in our line. Mm -hmm. So, and again, I believe this model, this, uh, my brain fails me. I'm not sure if this is in plastic, but for, these are all metal models there that you can get online. So we'll put her on. Uh, but we've had that type of figure in the line for you. Warlord. Time. Warlord. The, uh, the Reptus. Reptus. Yeah. Some really cool looking stuff yeah, in there. This was by Julie Goethe. This is a, an excellent mm -hmm. model. This is really, really cool. Oh, look. Hey, cool. Look. Cheetah Girl. Mm -hmm. Julie Guthrie sculpted this one also, and she sculpted that. Uh, now, when did she sculpt this one? A long time ago. Long time long ago. Time ago. Years ago. I don't remember. It was years and years ago, before Bones. Mm -hmm. And this figure is not in Bones. This is only a metal model. Mm -hmm. But um, just on the part number, the description up above. But again, if you're looking for a, for a cat person or some sort of cat folk, um, she's a great that ranger type or archer. Boom, and perfect. Yeah, she's been hot recently. Yeah, she's Which been Which also was, a, was an item we started seeing with the internet. Older models, when we would sit down and have those meetings and have to go through, uh, we would be looking at the internet sales of mm -hmm. models that weren't in the catalog, weren't in distribution, mm -hmm. and they were starting to exceed the yeah. numbers of stuff that was prior. So mm -hmm. it's the internet's quite a powerful. Somebody tool. was finding them, right? Yeah. So, but yeah, so if you need a, a cat person, that's a that's a great one to use. Uh, this is our our half giant, Ugly Luck, the half giant. Kevin Williams, mm -hmm. our in-house sculptor, sculpted this guy for us. But he's a half giant. So if you've got a, a player character that that is. Uh, Bigger than a human, but you know, smaller than a giant or an ogre. This guy's perfect. Um, our half giant warrior, ugly knight. So I, I teased you know a few minutes. We needed ago. him in Bobby's dungeon. Yeah, he's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, Valentine's mini, right? Yes. So being that it is, it is Valentine's, Valentine's Day, Day, right? Um, it's the Valentine's mousling. It's a little Cupid mousing. Cute, huh? Very cute. So you know, and it, maybe it's too late this year for Valentine's. No, no. I'm but sure there's somebody out there that'll immediately jump on an airplane, you should. fly here, make arrangements. Yeah, anything's possible. It's the Valentine's mousling. You know, very cute. Paint it up for your loved one. Maybe a little late for this Valentine's Day, but maybe not. Maybe you want to give it late. That's great. Or you can give it next year. Yeah. But Valentine's mousling. So, but this one's not late. This is our St. Patrick's Day mini. We have a St. Patrick's Day mini. Did you yes. know that? No, I remember. I mean, it. kind that of. Was... I mean, it's kind of. It is ostensibly, but it's, I mean, it really wasn't designed for that. But it's perfect for Valentine's or excuse me, St. Patrick's Day. This is Jason Weeby's mm -hmm. uh, leprechaun on a on a, a burrow, burrowing owl. Yes, I, how many I times remember when that's. How many times you seen that uh, in any other miniature range? No, zero. No. Zero is the answer. But that's true. We've got quite a lot of figures you're never going to find anywhere else. Yeah, there's some weird yeah. stuff. Jason has come up with some really cool stuff, like the the gnome on the frog, the leprechaun on the owl. It's really cute. So there are painted examples up on rickmini.com as well if you want to see how this looks when it's all painted up. But again, metal model, not in plastic. Valentine's Day mousing, metal model, not in plastic. The half giant, metal model, not in plastic. There mm -hmm. are tons. I mean, we've got 600 Bones models in production, and as far as the fantasy stuff goes, uh, mm -hmm. currently. Metal models, we're approaching 2,000 metal models in Dark Heaven alone. We're starting to work towards 3,000. 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. 2000. 2000. The part number, yeah, it's going to get up to almost to, yeah. it's 2,000. Um, but there's 600 like models. in pieces. No exactly. Yeah. There's 2,000, or there's 600 Warlord SKUs. But even inside that SKU range, there are multiple models in those packs. Packs, so, yes. Uh, well, it's like if you needed a, a Barbarian Elf, the first place you go to is the Warlord line. There were a lot, that was a really good one in there. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of stuff. And that's, and I mentioned Chronoscope and just all these other ranges. We've had a lot of figures. And so, yeah, we know digging through ReaperMinute.com can be kind of a, a Daunting a thing. task. Yeah, there's a lot to look through. So using the figure finder is a great thing to do. Um, I mean, just using the search feature is a good thing, you know, looking for the tags and things like that. So anyway, that's kind of, uh, kind of a look that I forget anything. I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's kind of a look at um, some of the figures you can find on RootBrainer.com for, for you know, popular role-playing games today. So, so I see some other really fun stuff. Over there. So let's look at some giants, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so these are some of the hill giants that Bobby Jackson did. We mounted this one to a base. Uh -huh. This is from Bones 4. Uh, this one's another one of the other. This, now, these guys were um, a pair, so mm -hmm. they were in the, the thing as a pair. Inside the Kickstarter. Yeah, and this guy was the hill giant hunter with his saber-tooth saber -tooth cat. Uh -huh. Like I said, we just kind of put this guy on a three-inch base to sort of, you know, he stands better that way, but he, you know, he's, uh, he looks good. They look good together. They make yeah. a nice little pack of uh, hill giant hunters. Yes. So, um, we had a question. Where is my question here? Someone says... 
Here we go. You ready? All right. We're, we're not professionals. Hi, this is Tristan Macklin from Mesquite, Texas. I get a paycheck. Uh, I was wondering if the new fire giant Huntsman can be based separately from the Hellhound or are they one figure that need to share a base? Thanks for your question, Tristan. Oh, well, here's your answer. Here. Good question, too. Get these guys off. Get out of here. Get out of here, guys. Here's the uh, Hill Giant Huntsman, right? You know, if you want to, we can put one of these little Hill Giants on here just for, for scale perspective. That looks kind of silly. Um, the Fire Giants are bigger. But the, uh, they're separate. You can uh, mount them together on a base if you want to, or you can uh, live them off, whatever you want to do. It, the Cut the chain off and attach any beast you want. Yes. True, absolutely. Cut the chain out, put another weapon in his hand, you can do that. The good thing about bones is easy convertible, easy, right? Yes. You can do all kinds of, you can cut his hands off and repose and do all kinds of stuff. Um, he looks cool on a base because you, he's able to put the tension on the chain to rock the, uh, mm -hmm. the, hell, the hellhound back. Like the hellhounds are really kind of pulling at it. So, um, But yeah, so this is the, uh, you don't have to base them at all. You want to see something cool? Yeah. Always. Always? Okay. Always. It's half the fun. Okay. This is a preview model for something coming up sometime later this year, maybe for a special project. But it's I not a Bones know. piece. I mean, it's not a Kickstarter piece. It's not a Bones 4 piece. Bones 4 piece, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, this so is it's gonna, totally brand new. Totally brand new. No one's ever seen this before. Only two people. He likes the build up. Only two people have seen this before, and it's me and Daryl. I saw it, and you brought it in. Oh, you did? You said you didn't see it. Okay, <laughs> whatever. Maybe, maybe four people. Maybe Justin saw it, too. Didn't know if you were paying attention. So, ready? You want to see it? Yes. Go. Okay. Boom. Here he is. This is the Storm Giant. Um, this is based on the, uh, the Storm Giant. He's 120 millimeters tall. Scalpies. Okay, yeah. Uh, he's Julie's little cat. Yeah, okay. There. Here we go. So, he's 120 millimeters tall. Um, the plan now is that when he is released, that the, the lightning bolt here would be mm -hmm. a clear piece, like clear blue oh. or maybe clear yellow. Oh to make it look like it's, you know, kind of energy or whatever, uh -huh. but, um, you know, some people were sort of making fun of our giant, saying that our storm giant was too small from Bones 1, and he is a little small, but, you know, like I said, we didn't. I mean, we're just kind of, we're, we're trying to learn, so. so you this never is, stop learning. You never stop learning. Never try, always try to do better. So this guy's um, storm giant, and there might be another giant or two coming up, maybe. We'll have to wait and see. But I think that it's is, cool. It's a very, it is, it's a very This is sculpted piece. by Chris Lewis. Yes. Chris did an amazing job. So we kept the, the sword from the original design. He just kind of got it on his hip back there. Get that. Yeah, so that gives you a little more perspective of how big he is. He's so, big. Yeah, he's just massive. He's awesome. I'm, and I'm do we know what material he'll be in? Or Obviously not metal. He'll resin. be in metal. He'll be in metal. Oh, in metal? Yeah, you're getting no, the bill. That comes out of your paycheck. You're, no, you're mine. getting the bill. Yeah. Uh, he'll be in, uh, you know, maybe he'll be in some sort of plastic material. I don't right. know. I don't know. Um, yeah, pretty cool. And I expect to see a, a, a painted version of this guy. Uh, yeah. here within a it's, couple it's, it's, um, there, that would be a, that'd be a lot of fun to paint. Michael Proctor has already kind of been Eyeing it. annoying me about, well, I'm going to paint your storm giant. Okay. All right. So anyway. Sooner than later. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. So um, that's, that's, the, a neat that's the preview. And well, next week we have another big preview, um, which I think is pretty cool. You don't even know about it yet. No, I don't. No, I, don't. It. No. I, think I didn't see him until I earlier. think it's pretty cool. And then cool. obviously my seeing was denied. Yes. So. He's very cool. He's very cool. So there's that. So speaking of scale, mm -hmm. and people make fun of us for blowing things out of scale. This is way over the top. It's way cool, though. It is. It is super it is cool. Just way cool. Just look at this from just what it is. What it is. You don't. You don't carry any yeah. affiliation with this. Proctor. I think it was Proctor. I saw said if if because it, it's a it's a parade piece. It's mm -hmm. a part of a parade carnival and carnival in in Italy. In Italy. Uh, and he said, if if our if us if we had parades like this, he would be there. I I'm with it. This mm -hmm. piece is just incredible. You have to look past any of the artist interpretations, all that kind of junk. Don't worry about that. All your, just yeah. look at it. Your if you're a GW fan, just it's really going to rock your soul. All your off. don't. We, this doesn't. We're not saying anything. Okay, we're not taking sides here. Just look at this from yes. what it is. Yes. And do not send us your emails about any sort of. Well, you're that. that now you're going to get more in your inbox. Well, I'm not going to read them. Justin, show the video. Una corona d'alloro ricorda un po' il Cesare romano, quindi mette insieme la tradizione romana con il, questo, questo personaggio fantascienti, iconografie diverse, per, ecco qui probabilmente è uno dei, dei girando su se stesso e, ed è molto curato nell'aspetto appunto della, della coloritura dell'armatura. Della, dell ok. 
That was that's pretty that cool. Was cool. I loved the floating on the drones, the eyes moving. I mean, the paint job. I mean, I have there's miniatures that that uh, fraction that's so I'm little tiny ones. I could never. I've never seen painted that well. Talk I mean, about just talk about scale creep. Oh yeah, no the scale. Is that on their that, new? Is that yeah. the new scale from? Uh, I don't know, man. You know they've been always been been big. You know, sure, although we did the heroic scale, we've been accused of slaughtering scale for just, the last just, twenty years. But that re- one, yeah. that is just a cool interpretation. I they, love the guy at the front, the ultimate. Uh, just yeah, going it was the cool. Whole, yeah, they redefined um, yeah. heroic scale right there. They did. So, all right. Scale wise, that one's out of the park. Pretty detail neat. wise, out of the park. All so. right, so we're gonna read some questions now. Okay. No fancy segue into that. No segue into that. So, so. We're just going to just jump into the questions. All right. Okay. So right off the top, this question is for Ed Ron. That's me and you. <laughs> what is your vision for Reaper for the future, in the future? I'm concerned about Reaper changing from a Texas company to a branch, as he uh-huh. quoted, of another company. I don't expect to get an answer or anything, for, or anything free from my question. Just an honest answer. This is from Candle. Okay. And I guess it's in reference to the, the my GW card, my little cheeky GW comment. Okay? Speaking of GW. Now, where that comes from is, is every year, two or three times during the year, I'll get these emails or phone calls from people in the industry. Oh, we understand you're selling, or we understand you're buying, or any of this and that. And it is. It's just rumors and gossip. And it's never happened. We've always embraced it. We play along with it. Um, that was really about it. But no, GW is not in the process of buying us. We're not selling out. We would not be a good fit for them So I should anyway. stop packing my office? Yes, yes, oh, yes, okay. yes, yes. Right. And, uh, and you need to stop working on the fake British accent. <laughs> so, Crikey. but anyway, right. but yeah, that oh, wait, was, that's yeah. Australian. So, but Sorry. anyway, that is around here, we've always been very amused at what people, somewhere, whoever starts these rumors is just, and then it eventually gets to somebody that knows me or knows me well enough to at least send me an email and say, hey, this is what I heard, you know, you don't have to confirm or deny and all this other stuff. And it happens, so okay, we played with it. So anyway, no, it's not happening. Okay, all right, okay. okay. This is from Brian Michael Moore, okay? Hi guys, I'm a huge fan and I'm an avid painter of your minis from my tabletop RPG sessions. Mm-hmm. My question is, sometimes when I thin my paints to create a thinner coat to go straight onto Reaper bones, the white bones material is a bit hydrophobic. In this case, with the new bones black as well, or is this the case with the new bones black as well? Or can I apply watered down paint straight onto the surface without an undercoat or or this hydrophobic effect? Thanks for, so much for all you do. First of all, explain what does hydrophobic mean? Well, that would just be the, the beading effect. Uh, you've seen it on uh, wax the hood of your car. When it rains, what's it all do? It beads up. And so what you're looking for is coverage. Yeah. Okay, you want it to go. Um, if using a primer, the brush on primer, always again, with bones, wash your figure, Use a brush on primer. I think that might eliminate some of Brian's things right. right off the bat. Because if you're trying to stain the material, that's really when you water your paint down so much, what you're trying to do is more or less stain the primer if you're that thin. Mm-hmm. And if it's that thin, there's nothing, you're not going to stain the plastic. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, if you want to go straight to bones, I would thicken it up. I just wouldn't thin it as much if you're looking for really thin coverage. A translucent, you want to see the white pop build a few layers. Right. Just add, don't thin it as much. Or use a brush on primer, either way. But yes, that, that, that could happen. So basically, two things, Brian, is uh, one, wash your models first with mm-hmm. soap and water. That'll help reduce the, Because there could yes. be anything, There could be releases, oils, anything, anything on Yes, there. anything on And secondly, uh, don't thin your, you don't as really, much. I mean, you can, yeah. but you don't really need yeah. to. The, the core colors are really thin as they are, so right. for layering, but. Um, but there are people that do paint. I mean, that was the old so the way you heritage did, yeah. uh, stain painting method. Yeah, but you but you need a primer if you're going to do that. Yeah, because you're really just staining. You're not going to yes. stain the, the plastic. Painting, yes. so. Okay. so hope that helps. So there you go, Brian. Okay, so this is from Jared Greenwald. Okay. Okay. Howdy. In the past, some of the metal, metal pieces were delivered in regular Bones material. Mm-hmm. Okay. Will that happen in Bones Black? If so, what will determine if a given piece will be in Bones or Bones Black? Thanks. So... What we're talking about is, is in Bones 1 and Bones 2, several of them, you'll find mm-hmm. Dark Heaven metal pieces, just like when Ron was reviewing it earlier, mm-hmm. that have transitioned over to plastic or to the Bones material. Mm-hmm. Okay, The main issue there was what we that technology to make the white Bones is different than the Bones black. As such, we were able to take models that were actually physical metal pieces that had been mastered and send them off and have them converted to the Bones. That doesn't help with uh, the bones black. So bones black are. Yeah, d- oh. Uh, oh, the, sorry. the digital models. Cause, there we go. I didn't mean to, to peg you. No, there. it's okay. The oh. digital models are 
or work really well for the Bones Black process because yes. we can send a digital. So file. the Bones Black digital is now with redoing and revisiting old uh, models, which we've done. There would be a new digital file made, and you would see that going. But as far as just grabbing a model out of the line and sending it and having it turned into where we're going to use it in Bones Black, that's not really very practical. Uh, we do have to. We, it's better with a digital model. The, yeah, there are some examples where we have turned Bones uh, uh, hand sculpted models into Bones Black materials, mm -hmm. uh, Bones Black uh, models. For example, in the Dreadmere expansion in Bones Four. Uh, Bob Rodolfi and Julie Guthrie sculpted several models that are hand sculpted, right. but they convert into Bones Black. Yes. Right? But when you go back into, into the, some of the older figures, um, some of those may not translate as well. Right. But, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're, you know. We're alert. One of that was one of the things we learned. We relied very heavily in the first Bones on metal models. Yeah. But that was where we ran into the wispy weapons. These are too thin, mm -hmm. the angles. We learned a lot from that to not make those mistakes later. So. Yeah. Do you foresee uh, modular miniatures for armies with head swaps and weapon spurs a possibility from Reaper? This is from Stephen, uh, Stephen Gabriel. Yes, I see it really. We've, all, we've done it in the past. Um, it's not really generally a very popular theme for people uh, because most people want to buy the figure and start painting it. They mm -hmm. don't want to build right. a model. Right. However, those options, and that's always on the table. And we, I do know we have two programs that we're working on right now that are really early that allow that kind of swapping or maneuvering or conversion or weapon swaps, yeah. choosing weapons, things like that. Um, military, you know, if you're, if you're talking more like military, uh, uh, we're going to build armies. Armies and stuff. Uh, Napoleonic, historical armies, World War II or something. That's not really right now into what we're doing. We would probably, we're not going to come out with a whole line of, of World War II guys that are, will swap and stuff, yeah. at least for this time. That's not on the slate. Right. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we got one more. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready? Still going? This is for you. Me. This is from Ben Warwick. Okay. He says, which do you prefer, BX or BECMI? That's not me. I was AD&D. &D. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, that one's yours. The, uh, uh, I was AD&D &D too. But I, I, I'm, kind of, I'm always fond of the basic and expert sets. Mm -hmm. When it got into the companions and the immortals and masters, uh, I was I I didn't really I think I may have gotten those as a kid but I didn't really play them but we played the heck out of the Alley Dread mm -hmm. and uh, you know keep on the Borderlands there's your right. basic and yeah, expert no. stuff so I think that was just a part of the whole going down I remember seeing it vaguely in the stores but yeah. everything was always at that time merchandise for the the books the player's handbook that that just seemed to be what everybody gravitated to yeah and uh, so so anyway hope we, that helps we all we like D and D in all forms yes yeah oh yeah so we're Pathfinder, it all. It just, it's just yeah. fun to do. Especially Pathfinder, yeah. yeah. Uh, excited for Pathfinder 2nd Edition this summer. Yes, that's coming. Very excited. It's going to be good. We've got some new Pathfinder stuff coming out we hadn't even announced yet. And then we do have the paint line that's being worked on. The Pathfinder paint line. Um, um, maybe, uh, maybe here in a, a couple weeks we can show the entire array of Pathfinder colors in the bottles right here on our table. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. That would be fun. That would be cool. Yeah, no. uh, test those out, paint with those. That would mm -hmm. be cool. I think maybe in a couple weeks we can do that. You'd have to paint to do it. Um, I'll just watch. <laughs> I'll just watch. You're doing such a good job anyway. Right, so. yes, yes. All right, well, for all the latest information and news, please visit www.reapermini.com. YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram. Just get there, like us, heart us, have fun. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure to send us your questions to reaperlive at reapermini.com. Right, I got it right this time. Mm -hmm. right. I was waiting. Here's, here's, the, here's the email address right here. Um, I think that's it. Did we forget anything? I don't Justin, think so. do we need to bring anything else up? No. We're, We're good. Okay. Good. All right. Well, Everybody stay safe. Enjoy your Valentines. Mm -hmm. We will we'll see you next week. See you next week. Oh, here. I'll do the clappy thing. No. Do we have okay. to wait 45 seconds to make no. it official? No. Like, you know, I got in trouble last time because I wasn't you actually don't, watching. You don't need to do all okay. That. okay. All right. Uh, okay. Not bad. So I'm going to be doing the intro while he's doing this. Hi. <laughs> I at least need to, get a, I need to get a rolling start here. And he's got to get going. I got to learn Morse code. So I can just go WTF. <laughs> but give me a second to at least get well, the Well, I don't, rolling. it's not, I'm not doing it.